Your love and knowledge bear Put some knowledge in my brain And teach me about stuff Oh, let me be Your knowledge fish I don't want to be a tiger Cause tigers don't know much I don't want to be a lion Cause lions eventually have to eat lunch I just want to be your knowledge bear Put some stuff inside my brain And cover me with hair Oh, let me be Your knowledge bear Baby, let me be Around you every night Run you to the library Pay all of your fines Oh, let me be Your knowledge bear I don't want to be a tiger Cause tigers don't know much I don't want to be a lion Cause lions are the same species as tigers And won't have much intelligence as well I just want to be your knowledge bear Learning things and singing things And rustling up your hair Oh, let me be your knowledge bear Oh, let me be your knowledge bear. I just want to be your knowledge bear. Everyone's having a knowledge. Hey, Salmon Skins, welcome to episode 15, uh, episode 15, uh, en français, which is a word that sounds like headphones, and a nickname for headphones is cans. Guys, we've come full circle uh, linguistically. Is that how you say it? So I am recording in the office uh, with, i gotta, I got to say, a bloody big, massive black desk. It's very, very impressive. Kind of intimidating. It's like, it's a Kara's desk for her her coven calls. And uh, it's, it's black. It's pitch black. It's very gothic. It's very cool. Uh, it's cool chic. Uh, it's got a bit of a wood grain to it. It's lovely. And it's, it's yeah, I mean, I feel like I could stand here, put my knuckles on it, and I almost imagine this is what maybe Hitler felt like. I'm not comparing Kara to Hitler. Um, I mean, you know, Hitler was a uh, vegetarian, and Kara does occasionally eat the occasional sausage, sitting in her occasional chair. And we don't have, there's only one chair in, in this. We, we, we've, no, we've no time for occasional chairs, you know. It's just like, like, why don't, why do you call it an occasional chair? Because you sit in occasionally. Why don't you call it a partially neglected chair? I mean, it's basically the same thing. Am I right, <laughs> or am I wrong? So, guys, we have got uh, a jury update. I was talking to Jerry. He was very happy that I read out his email verbatim, uh, going completely against his instructions. But he told me the rest of the story. Remember he said the himself and mother, not his mother now, my mother, um, but he calls m- mother mother, which confuses me sometimes and infuriates mum because when he's on a call with me and he says, of course, mother had to do this or that, um, mum will just pipe up in the background, I'm not your mother, um, because he needs reminding of that. So they went to UL, early 90s, uh, University of Limerick Concert Hall or something, and they saw Country and Western Star, and uh, they got drowned going back to the car. And said, that's not the rest, that's not the end of the story, but I'll tell you that for another time. So he told me, and now I'm telling you, they got so drenched, their clothes were drenched, but they realized, they were saying, look, it's only our top layer that is drenched, our underpants, our underwear is uh, not drenched. So let's just take our clothes off and we'll drive home in our underpants. And they did with the the heater on full blast because it was the dead of winter. And as the old saying goes, if you found yourself caught in the rain after a concert near Limerick and you have to drive all the way back to Offaly, which is a long drive, and your clothes are wet, you may as well take them off because your underwear will always be dry on a cold winter's night. Uh, it's not the catchiest of, uh, snappiest of, of catchphrases, of sayings, 
but of uh, catch sayings. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's true. So, I mean, it was quite the picture because, you know, my dad likes to wear classic white fronts and uh, classic, uh, I call it the diehard comedy vest. There's another name for it, but it's a horrible name. So I'm not going to say that name. So, uh, yeah, they drove all the way back. It's not damp because they were dry, but with their clothes in a heap behind them. And it would have been, oh God, it would have been so funny if they got stopped by the guards. They'd be like, what are you doing? We're just coming back from a from a country and western concert. Oh, the dancing got so, we were sweating and we had to take our clothes off. I didn't ask you anything about your clothes. Well, I just thought you would be coming up in the line of questioning. I mean, you see two people here completely, almost completely naked, I suppose, leaving little to the imagination. So please, sir, stop talking to me. Okay, (laughs) fair enough. Why are you dressed like you work in a cocaine factory? I always wonder that in movies. It was like you have uh, these cocaine factories, I guess because it's so hot, because they're processing the cocaine and they don't have fans. But it's like uh, women standing around in their in their knickers uh, bagging up cocaine. Is it so they don't steal any cocaine? I, d- I don't understand that because in the gangster movies, like in Casino, when they're going in to do the count and your man uh, picks up the suitcase full of money for the boys back home, uh, the bosses... And there's guys counting money with machines and stuff, and they've all got clothes on. They're, they don't make those guys. It's not like a bunch of fat Italian American gangsters sitting around in their underpants counting money, and they have to wear translucent underpants so they can see if there's any money inside. And if there is, their excuse is, "Well, I'm 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 stripping part time. I'm trying to put myself through gangster college. Um, I go I go to that very unsuccessful strip club that's about to close down." It's called Goodfellas. I know, yeah, it's right on the nose, the name. Hey, I think the guy who owned it, he's a massive cokehead. He said, uh, I'll call it Goodfellas, and that way, Martin Scorsese, Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, all the guys, they'll come visit. I mean, they got it. It's called Goodfellas. I wonder how drug dealers are doing during all this. I imagine they're doing fine. I imagine people are bulk buying cocaine in much the same manner as they're bulk buying toilet paper. They don't really need that much. They're worried it might run out and uh, they get the cheap stuff, which is very corrosive. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of things uh, similar there. But, um, you know, through the letterbox, I guess it's easier. I mean, but then again, within the two kilometer radius, guys, I got to, I got to admit something. I broke the law. Yeah, I know. Uh, little old me, a lawbreaker. Because uh, we have a two-kilometer zone here. You can exercise within two kilometers from your place. Uh, Phoenix Park is, is within two kilometers. Um, God, I'm really helping out assassins who, who are looking for me during this time. Um, that was one of my tweets that I came out. I'm not very funny online, uh, you know, in tweet form. I, you know, I like to monologue. I'm a stand-up comedian. That's what I like to do. I'm monologuing right now. Yeah, I tweeted out a tweet, and it was funny, I thought. Uh, it was basically saying, uh, you know, uh, well, here's the tweet. One positive thing to remember in this time of crisis is that sniper assassin jobs have not been affected in any way. They probably find it even easier now, as everyone seems to be social distancing and social distance dancing in the streets. But it's true. It's like um, you want to hire a hitman. Oh, it's easy. You, everyone's at home. No one can go within two kilometers. It's like, wh- wh- where's the target? Well, he's either in his home or within two kilometers of that house. So that's going to be a a fairly easy stakeout for you. I mean, that's what I always feel about Facebook and stuff like that, where people are checking in online. It's like before, you know, like in the 70s, someone would get a photograph and they'd have to trace the, you know, follow the person and see what restaurants they go to, see what their daily routine is pick the optimum time to murder them. Uh, and now it's just like, oh, he's just checked into this pub. I'll just go wait outside the pub and then I'll kill him when he comes out and uh, make it look like, you know, alcohol poisoning. The alcohol poisoning ripped through his liver like a bullet. 
Well, it's an open and shut case. Good luck. So anyway, I went beyond the two kilometers. Basically, uh, I, I set off on a journey to pick up some uh, licorice cigarette papers and pick them up I did. I walked from here to Santry, which is 6.4 kilometers, so uh, twice the recommended, thrice the recommended uh, distance. And I, you know, you can get arrested, you can get two and a half grand fine. I say, bring it on. What are the cops going to do? But I was just by myself and I walked all that way. And then I did a little loop around to see my housemates and see how they were doing and talk to them from the garden to, in through a window. And uh, I think I've walked about 12, 13 kilometers over the course of a couple of hours and it was warm out. And uh, I managed to find a, a little spur and I got myself a nice coffee and a pastry. And I sat down in the middle of the road on the green bit because I knew no one would walk past me. And I ate, ate my croissant and I drank my coffee. And I felt like a human being again. I felt like a human being again. Boop, boo, doo, 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 doo. Edwin's Heaven of Knowledge is experiencing technical difficulties. Boop, 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 boop. Back soon. Boop, bamboo, damp, wind, damp, bamboo, damp, bamboo, So, um, sorry guys, I just had to reboot there. Um, so yeah, I, I managed to get eight packs, which is all he had, because I went in and I said, it was great. It was like in a movie where um, you get to be the cool guy who does the thing that no one else does. Like I went in, that you got those uh, orange uh, cigarette papers, the licorice ones, and he goes, "Yeah," and I said, "I'll take them all." You know, like real cool. Like wow, he's going to take all of them. And he's got. We've got eight packs. I'll take all eight packs. Like I didn't even know how many he had. He could have had 200, and I would have been like, oh, right, I just need to get to a bank machine. But though the chip is, it's a little bit ticky, and you know, you just want to go, I take it all and just throw them a little bag of money that highwaymen would have, that have like doubloons and stuff in them. You know what, you know what I'm trying to say. I got back, I was exhausted as well. I was just, I wasn't used to walking that distance. Uh, my body wasn't used to exercising that much. I've been eating fairly healthily, but just it's been tough. So uh, I've been looking through my old um, notes. I have these old comedy notes, uh, you know, just kind of ideas for jokes and stuff like that. Some of them haven't been done yet. Some of them have. Uh, and the name of it is the the first thing I wrote in it, which was uh, like a couple of years ago at this stage. But I thought I had a great genius billion dollar idea for an app. And, okay, so you know the way when you hear a song in a pub or in a restaurant or in a nightclub or whatever, and you don't know what the song is, and you get out Shazam, and what you do is you, you, Shazam listens to it, analyzes it, and says, that's Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen, um, the employer. And... Uh, it's amazing. This is amazing technology. It's been around for a while. And I was like in a park looking around going, thinking, imagine if you had Shazam, but it's for plants and flowers and stuff. So you point it at it. That's an amazing uh, flower checker. It's called flower checker. Um, there's already a, a bunch of them. So you just take a picture and it tells you what kind of plant it is. And there's one that you take a picture and it tells you, um, you know, what, how to take care of the plant. Give it water is usually the number one thing that it says. Just give it water. That's all it needs is water. But uh, I thought it was a billion dollar idea. Maybe it was. I actually don't know when Flower Checker, which is kind of like the number one, you know, but then there's Plant Snap, Plant a Fire, Like That Garden, Leaf Snap, um, Nature Gate, you know, all these ones that are just, uh, everyone got there before me. It's so annoying. But then I had a, a, an idea for another app, and I don't know whether this is uh, a thing or not. I haven't looked it up because I want it to be a thing. I need something to hold on to during this pandemic. I need to know that when this is over, I can get together with some technical whiz kid, some wunderkind um, who 
who, as I said, Wunder Kinnan immediately thought of uh, German film director Werner Herzog. Yes, I have an idea for an app. It is a good idea. Do you ever notice when you are watching a film and the volume goes too loud for the music or the sound effects, but the dialogue is too low? Or if there's an action scene all of a sudden and you want to make it quieter, there should be an app for that. And I agreed with Werner when he said that to me. And I said, Werner, I'm going to steal your idea. And he said, I can't believe that you would do that. No, you must never steal my ideas. And he just, he stood up um, as if to do something. And then he kind of looked a bit lost. And I just snuck away. He's an odd man. I don't know why I'm friends with him. But anyway, I took Werner's idea. And I said, I'm going to make that into an app. It's going to be called The Volume Buddy. So you're watching an action movie. And it basically, I think it has an algorithm where it listens ahead to see if there's any sort of big action scenes coming up, any loud noises. And then it just automatically readjusts the volume, lowers the volume or raises the volume accordingly. And I say raises the volume, not hires up the volume. Ah, sweet, sweet orange, orange cordial. Because that's a weird thing that Dublin people do, and I don't, I've never heard it anywhere else. When uh, I'm, my Dublin friends have said it to me, when the volume is too low, if something is low, I guess it needs to be hired. But if you lower the volume and raise the volume, it's like you'd lower an anchor and raise the anchor, and you'd like, you know, lower volume and raise volume. You wouldn't lower an anchor and higher up the anchor. Like higher up the anchor would get you fired from whatever nautical job you bullshitted your way into uh, with the cunning use of a cap and a pipe. If you've got a cap and a pipe and a beard, you can become a nautical man. Uh, I've done it myself, you know, for a brief period of time. But um, I don't know if that's an app. Uh, if it is, and someone out there wants to make it into an app, and we'll I'll split the prose- proceeds. <laughs> I'll split the what? I'll split the proceeds. Not the proceeds. What the hell? Proceeds? I I don't know. I don't know if that's a, I I don't know if it's been uh, proven that you can say it that way, or even proven. But um, and then uh, like all my notes just make no sense. Uh, one line here: Jenga is chess for idiots. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, I never actually um, I never tweeted that one. But uh, like a lot of it is just terrible. Without without my beard, I look like a homeless potato. I thought that was like, eh, okay, but I don't be making fun of the homeless. Uh, there's other stuff here. Um, yeah, I was getting philosophical one day, and uh, I was saying, how did God the Creator run out of things to create? You know, it's like because in the Bible, I mean, I think I know it's only stories. Stories written 200 years after dubious events may or may not have happened. Um, but it says, how did God the Creator run out of things to create with and had to resort to mutilating man? Uh, did he at least have the decency to create anesthetic beforehand? And I was like, what is this about? Because here's the thing. In the Bible story, uh, he makes Eve out of Adam's rib. That's the story. Like he creates the world in seven days, he creates the Garden of Eden, he creates man. And eventually Adam's like, oh, I got a serious case of the blue balls here, God. Anything he can do? And he goes, all right, here, let me just grab one of your ribs and I'll make a woman. It's like, what? Can't you just create a woman? Why do you need a rib? You've created everything. You created the sun, all the animals, but now suddenly you're running low on supplies and you need my rib to create a woman what's wrong with you god but that's that's what he did um according to the bible so that's all true okay guys we're going to take a little break here and we're going to be back 
with more nonsense. It's the salmon of knowledge, commercial break, and here it comes now, and listen now now. Okay, guys, thanks very much for listening. That's all for today on the podcast. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, especially Dead Badger. Uh, thanks, Dead Badger, all the way in Winnipeg. Um, I've forgotten your actual name. Um, my internet's gone down, so I'll give you a personal thank you in the next podcast. And also Charlie Monroe, uh, who are uh, both of those people are sponsoring me on Patreon. If you want to become a salmon skin official salmon skin and a uh, supporter of the podcast, go to Patreon and look up Edwin Salmon of Knowledge and pledge what you can, if you can. So guys, to sing us out, uh, it's Brendan Blowhard again with another one of his unique versions of classic songs. So uh, I'll see you next time, guys. Take care, salmon skins. Bye 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 bye. For the money, a two for the show Three together right now Go cat, go, but don't you Step on my blue suede shoes You can do anything But lay off those blue suede shoes well, You can hold me down Shit my face Rape my granny all over the place Do anything that you want to do Fuck the get away from those shoes but Don't you Step on my blue suede shoes Well you can do anything But lay off those blue suede shoes well, it's one for the money, two for the show. Three to get ready now, get the fuck out, but don't you step on my blue suede shoes. Well, you can do absolutely anything my family would say, away from those shoes I bought. Oh, yeah! Blue suede shoes. Don't wear them in the rain. Or if it's on the teeth, more. Well, it's one for the money, two for the show Three to get ready now, go cat, go But fuck off, get away from those shoes They cost me months, wages to buy those shoes Well, it's a, a blue, blue, a blue suede shoes Blue, blue, a blue suede shoes Blah, blah. A blue, blue, a blue suede shoes, yeah A blue, blue, a blue suede shoes Do anything to my wife, but get away from those shoes <laughs>